Yeah, I mean, I only had the operation in Octo late October. I got out of hospital in uh, late November. I, couldn't, I had to learn to walk again. I did all these kind of things. And I actually ended up doing a gig two weeks after I got out for Gareth O'Connor because I wanted to support him, what he's going through. I mean, honestly, I feel like um, I'm just getting through it. You know, I've got amazing help from people, great support from people. Rona Ryan was dropping around food. My mates were dropping around food and trying to look after me. But as we were saying before the break, you know, I'm so viciously independent. I'm kind of like, what are you doing here? What are you doing back at my house? And they're like, we're just trying to give you a bit of soup. Calm down. You know, and all of that. And my friends made my bed for me coming out of hospital and really lovely things like that. So, yeah, vital signs, check it out. Here okay. I am. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, I have to say, I find it extraordinary mm. the kind of the kind of form you're in. Yeah. I, like I was watching in Ray Darcy and I was like, okay, if I was Oh, him, when I got the twins out. I, yeah, yeah. If I was him... I'd be like sitting in a dark room, yeah. really angry. Like, I mean, you, you think know? you might be that way, and certainly I can understand that. And, and the weeks after the surgery were the absolutely horrific. I had terrible nightmares from the drugs and all of that kind of stuff. At the same time, there is a realization that, you're, that I'm alive. I, I lost three different people last year to brain cancer and different cancers. And you just kind of think to yourself, and, and you know, that lovely uh, lady who died recently, that young girl, the 26 year old girl, you know, from cer cervical cancer, things like that. You just think it could all be over like that. But I'm alive. And some, I think the Falls Road, and I don't say this lightly. I grew up in West Belfast in the worst of times. And I think having grown up in such a difficult situation really has kind of given me some kind of steeliness about me that I don't even realize is there. Because I think for the longest people, time people would go, oh, you know, he's lovely hair and a lovely voice, isn't he lovely? And I'm, I can be lovely, but I also can be very steely when I need to be, it, it appears, mm -hmm. because it never occurred to me to feel sorry for myself. I've never been depressed in my life. I mean, as we know, the, the mental health issue is, is, is so huge at the moment. I have never suffered in that way, because honestly, I'm just thinking, I'm a lucky duck. I really am. I'm, I've gotten through it. I've gotten the best medical treatment there is in the world to have it. My friends all came together and they helped me pay for it, too, because I didn't have the right insurance, things like that. So I feel incredibly lucky. Honestly, the chemotherapy that I'm, I'm in the middle of it right now, I'm about halfway through. It is not a walk in the park. I, I do get very exhausted sometimes, but I'm not nauseous. The, the, the people in James's Hospital, they are an mm. army of angels, I'm telling you. They are never not in good humour, no matter what shape and we walk in the And have you had dark nights with it? No. I've got no. to say I haven't, because, again, for me, I'm thinking, Jesus, Brian, you're lucky. You're not stuck in Syria. You're not you know, really, really okay. nauseous and sick in bed and throwing up and like a lot of the ladies and gentlemen that I encounter in the, in the chemo ward are. And um, I just think that, uh, thank goodness, I, they got the cancer at the right time. As I always say, kind of say, you know, people's, people have the best intentions and all the rest of that. But, you know, my, my cancer was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I was very lucky to get it out. So, okay. so far, so good, Brenton. So